Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala rasulullah. A question is asking here about insurance, commercial insurance. What is the ruling on it? Now, it's important for us to understand that insurance is of two types. At-ta'meen, uh, at-tijari, at-ta'meen, at-ta'awni. At-ta'meen, at-ta'awni is cooperative insurance. That is basically where a group of people, they put money into a pot. And they say, listen, if anything happens, we'll just help each other. And we'll give each other loans to make sure that we help each other. That way, a person doesn't lose anything. There is no gambling involved. There is no riba involved. And the ulama have said, at-ta'min at-ta'awni is permissible. And ashrafat could even be mustahab, could even be wajib in certain scenarios. This is absolutely fine. And it is something, inshallah, a person will be rewarded for. Man dal ladhi yukridu al-aqrad bin hasana fayyudha'ifu lahu. Who is there that can give a goodly loan? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it. And for this person, he will get a great reward. This falls under giving each other a goodly loan. So I put in £10, you put in £10, now there's £20 in the pot. Next month, £10, and until it rises to £1,000. It could be then that, I don't know, my wall needs plastering. And from that thousand pounds, I'll say, Akhi, listen, I need to put a hundred pounds to plaster my wall. Can I do that? Because I haven't got the hundred pounds right now for myself. So he'll say, Yeah, fair enough. As long as you put the hundred pounds back, then you put the hundred pounds back afterwards. And that money keeps growing, and then you can help each other in that manner. That way, it's a, it's a loan, it's a way of us cooperating, and this is khair and this is good. I don't think on a commercial level that this exists, but this is a, definitely a way that we can help each other. Um, instead of resorting to impermissible forms of finance. At-ta'meen, at-tijari, this is the commercial forms of insurance that we are all aware of. This is where a person pays an agent or a company and says, listen, I will give you X amount of money, a thousand pounds, five hundred pounds, look after my car. If anything happens to it, you will cover the costs, you will cover damages, you will repair it, etc. But I'm going to give you £500 right now. And perhaps I will benefit from it or I will not benefit from it. But at least I'm covered. And this now applies to breakdown cover of cars and breakdown cover of appliances. This now applies to things which are similar in this regard. Warranties as well. You know, when you buy something from a store, they will offer extended warranties so they will say if you buy this fridge you get one year guarantee warranty with it but if you wanted an extended one you can pay an extra amount of 30 pound 500 pound 50 pounds whatever it might be and you get an extended warranty these are all forms of gambling as the ulama have said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it impermissible in the quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sign from Surah Ma'idah has said alcohol, intoxications, gambling, etc. are from the handiworks of shaitan so stay away from them so that you will be successful. In Surah Al-Baqarah يَسْتَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْقَمْرِمَ الْمَيْسِرِ they ask you about intoxications they ask you about gambling قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ the great sin in them وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ but there is some kind of benefit وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفِعِهِمَا but the sin is far greater than the good that it brings and there's a list that the ulama have actually given as to why insurance and breakdown cover etc and these things are impermissible and how it falls under the title of gambling number one if a person pays for something and they don't know what they're going to get in return this is a form of gambling and this is not allowed so if I give you £500 to cover my car am I going to benefit from that 500 don't know maybe maybe not Maybe I'll benefit more, maybe I'll benefit less. And this is not permissible. In the hadith of Abu Hurairah, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, forbade Naha and Bayt al Gharar, forbade transactions which are unclear as to who is going to benefit or what the benefit actually is. Therefore, it is not permissible because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, forbade these kind of transactions. And because now, because it's unclear, it falls under a type of uh, gambling. The ulama have also mentioned that when a person 
is seeking reliance on things that don't really give you any kind of reassurance, the level of taqwa and tawakkul of that person will be reduced. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتْوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and have reliance purely upon Allah by taking your relevant means, your actual means. But when you are paying into uh, some kind of insurance policy, that's not actual means, is it? Because you don't know whether you're going to benefit or not. The ulama have also mentioned, now this is probably the fourth reason, after ambiguity, after gambling, after reliance, the ulama have actually mentioned that if there is a payout, then it could involve riba. For example, I give my car insurance five hundred pounds as an issue with my car, and they pay me a thousand, two thousand, three thousand pounds. I've given them five hundred, and they're giving me more in return. Yes, it's not exactly money for money because the car is being used as a proxy. However, in the books of fiqh you will find that as long as money has been exchanged for money, even if there is something in between that is used as a means for money to be exchanged for money, then it is still a form of riba. So if I paid him 500, the actual work of the car is maybe 100, 200 pounds. Often the payout from insurance companies will be higher. It could even be lower. But that way there is still money being exchanged for money and this becomes impermissible for a person to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is probably the fifth reason or the sixth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us do not take money and do not take uh, people's wealth unjustly. Do not eat each other's wealth unjustly. And what that basically means is, and this is a summary of everything that we've had so far, which is that if you get involved with a business transaction, the benefit must be mutual. If I give you a pound, you give me a pound worth back of food. If I give you two hundred pounds, you give me two hundred pounds back worth of service. I cannot give you five hundred pounds and not get five hundred pounds worth back in service. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids this. And these are now some of the reasons as to why a that mean a tijari cooperative, sorry, commercial insurance is haram. However, we all got car insurance, we all got forms of insurance. How is it that we've got forms of insurance when it is haram? The ulama have said this is due to because of a necessity that exists. Meaning, if a person doesn't take this form of insurance, it could be harm, actual harm, there is no real alternative and by using this thing so these are from now the conditions of what is a darura, number one if a person doesn't do this thing then there is actual harm involved a person is starving there is no other food except for something which is haram, if he doesn't eat that thing which is haram, there is actual harm involved which is his own Demise, he could starve to death. Number two, by not doing this thing, the harm is going to be severe. So, if a person wants to say, for example, it's a darura, it's absolute necessity for me to take car insurance, but the government or the place where he's living, they've said no, it's optional, then that's not darura anymore. But if they have said, for example, if you don't, you're going to get fined, there's going to be points, you could go to jail, you can get your license taken off you, etc. And they're not messing around. There is an actual harm, and there is a threat of actual harm. Second condition. Third condition, there are no alternatives. I don't know of any alternatives to having insurance, but things like breakdown cover and things like that, there are, of course there are. You can employ someone, it might work out a bit more expensive, it might actually mean that you save money in the long run. So a person pays breakdown cover year after year after year after year. After 10 years, he's probably spent £500 of breakdown cover. But in those 10 years, had he not taken breakdown cover and actually used a roadside mechanic or something like that, perhaps he would have actually saved money. But even if he didn't, as long as an alternative exists, the person would be rewarded 
for staying away from some of the things that we have mentioned as to why it's haram. Darura, condition number four, is that if a person is going to engage in this thing, then it must be something that will actually remove the harm. So now, insurance is necessary because there is a harm. There is an actual harm. There is no alternative. And by having car insurance and things like that, it removes the threat of your license being taken away from you. But there's a fifth condition or a sixth condition to necessity, darura, which is that you can only take the bare minimum. So now let's go back to the person who is starving. There's haram meat in front of him. Can he eat to his fill? The answer is no. He's only allowed to take as much as he needs. And this makes sense now because if he goes beyond what is needed, there is no necessity anymore. There is no harm. There is no actual harm. There is an alternative, which is that he stops. Therefore, car insurance is haram and things like car insurance where a person is paying into something and he doesn't know whether he's going to get anything in return is haram and it only becomes permissible for a person to take these if there is a necessity. And from necessities, as the ulama have mentioned from you know the contemporary ulama, they have said, if you've got something which is similar to a necessity, sorry, similar to an insurance policy, but you know that you're going to actually benefit from it, you think very likely you're going to benefit from it. So, for example, you're paying to cover your appliance, your washing machine, £5 a month. But you know that your machine, your washing machine, it's a little bit old. In the year, you're going to spend £60 for insurance on your washing machine. And in that year, you're going to call the engineer out at least once. If you didn't have insurance and the engineer comes out, you know that the engineer is going to cost you more. You now know that there is a very strong likelihood that you are going to benefit from something where you're paying very little in and you're going to benefit, then inshallah, hopefully, this is the view that I follow, and I've seen this from certain ulama, they have said that this is not now haram anymore because all of the things which uh, are reasons as to why you shouldn't have insurance is no longer there anymore. However, if a person is covering his appliances or his car or something like that and there is no need for it, breakdown cover and uh, you know, all these things, and there is no need for it and there is no threat and he's only doing it for the sake of peace of mind or what if or what about re and that kind of stuff, then that is not allowed because of the reasons that we have mentioned. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us a good understanding of his religion and he blesses us with everything that he gives us and that he puts security and afiyah in ourselves and in our iman and in our actions and in all of our possessions. Allahu a'lam. Sallallahu alayhi wa